Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel Family Protection USA. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have been awesome. Really you have. I really appreciate all the respect I've been getting from you guys. Keep it up. You guys are awesome. Anyway, this video I just kind of want to talk a little bit about um, my EDC carry and why I carry the things that I do carry. So the CDC reports on average between 60,000 and 2.5 million defensive gun uses each year. Kind of want to tell you guys a story about what happened to me and my family. Stick with me for this. So I want to start out by telling you guys a little story that had happened to me, my wife, and my two sons. Um, it's not too bad, per se, but you don't really know what the outcome was going to be and what this person's intentions were at the time. So me and my wife and my, my newborn son at the time, he was only, I think, three months old. And my oldest son, which was four at the time, we had went out to the next town over. And any anybody that knows me knows I live in North Carolina right now. Um, the next town over was Hickory, North Carolina. It's about a 30-minute drive from here. And we had just finished up with a doctor's appointment for my youngest son. When he was born, he had torticollis, and we had to go through some... Uh, some physical therapy for that and we had just finished up with that but we stopped by a big box retailer i'm not going to talk about the store i'm not, I'm not going to talk about the name of the store or anything like that um it's really not that important what is important is what happened and how it happened so <clears throat> as we're pulling in the parking lot we're going down and we're trying to find a place to park and I noticed this older gentleman, you know, I mean, I'm 32 and, you know, he was older than me. I would say he was probably in his mid-50s, maybe early 60s. He had on a gray button-up t-shirt. He had on some cargo shorts and just just basic clothes, you know. But he was standing outside by the entrance door, and he had a phone up to his ear. And I noticed he kept looking at everybody, and he was watching everybody coming in, coming out. So I didn't really pay any mind to it. You know, I just thought it was somebody standing there talking to their loved one or whatever, you know, on the phone. So we find a place, and we park, and we get out. And as always, I grab my concealed carry weapon, which at the time was this a Springfield XD Mod 2. I have wisened up and changed my carry firearm from this to something different. But anyway, that's what I was carrying at the time in an appendix holster like this. <clears throat> I grabbed it out of the console, put it on before we even got out of the car. I always do that. You know, before we get out, we'll stop. I'll look around, make sure nobody's watching me put my gun on. And, you know, I'll make sure I have all my necessities, my knife, my spare mags, you know, whatever I need at the time. And <clears throat> generally, I carry, I carry some type of mace with me or OC spray. And this is just the Sabre spray from Walmart. It's kind of cheap. I'm a minimalist. So, if I don't have to spend a lot of money for something, I'm not going to. Uh, I do recommend getting some Palm OC spray, though. That's some pretty good stuff. It's pretty potent. And I can put a link in the description for Palm for you. But, anyway, I had everything except for my mace. I left it in the car, in a little storage space that's in the car, because we had just got back from a doctor's appointment. And, I, you know, I took all this stuff off before I go in. I try to comply with the law as much as I can. So, I forgot to grab that and put it 
back on my person. Anyway, we all get out of the vehicle and we're walking into the store. And as we're coming across the parking lot, I noticed the guy and he's watching us come from like two rows over, three rows over actually. And he's watching us all the way across the parking lot. So we cut through and then come back down. And I kind of tell my wife, you know, I'm like, hey, this guy's kind of weird. You know, he just keeps watching us. So she made a mental, mental note of what this guy looked like and what he was doing. And I did the same thing. But I was trying to be... I wasn't trying to be obvious about it because I have my son with me, you know, both of my kids, and I don't want my oldest son just freaking out over random people, you know. So when it comes to this stuff out in public, you have to have your situational awareness, but you can't panic the people that's with you at the same time. You can make them aware of the situations, but when it comes to little ones, you really don't want to talk about this stuff in front of them. Because you don't want them to panic and them be mentally scarred for the rest of their life because of something that could possibly be nothing. So I try to avoid that. And, um, you know, I just kind of whispered it to my wife, you know, and she knew what I was talking about. She watched the guy and she understood. So as we're going in, the guy's still standing there and he kind of turns and he just watches us as we're going through the front door. And we go around to the other side and I put them on my left and this guy to my right. So <clears throat> I made sure that I was in between him and my family. And also my gun, I'm right handed. So it was appendix carry. It was directly below me. If I had to push them out of the way and use that, I could have. So I try to strategically plan things like that when we're out in public. But we get into the store and we're, we get our cart, get the kids set in the cart. And as we're going down, we come through and I think we go through two or three different aisles. And then we come back out and I see the guy standing at the end of the aisle. Still got his phone up to his ear and he's watching us again. So we do our shopping and then we had to go get something else. We go back down the aisle to go grab something else. And, uh, about five or ten minutes later, I look back around because at this point, you know, I, I've got my head on a swivel and I'm watching for this guy. And I'm, I keep watching, you know, left and right behind me, making sure I've got the kids. So I'm pushing the cart. I have the kids. My wife is with me. She's doing the shopping getting the stuff, putting it in there, and I'm watching her. But I noticed the guy, again, a couple aisles up. He's still got his phone up, and he's still watching us. So I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, you know, this guy's still watching us. He's still in here. He doesn't have anything in his hand right now. Just you watch my back, I'll watch your back. I don't know what this guy's intentions are. If I have to confront him, I will. You know, I did not want to confront anybody just from watching us um, in front of my kids, like I said. So, we keep going, and then I notice the guy again, and he's he's finally got something in his hands. He's got, I don't know, I think it was like some rice and beans or something, and he's still got his phone up. But we're in the store for probably 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, and... The guy is still almost every single place we are. And if he's not, you know, he's probably watching us from somewhere else. I, and I'm not sure why he was watching us versus other people. But obviously he's seen something that we had that intrigued him. So <clears throat> we keep going. I'm like, you know, let's just go ahead and leave. Let's get our stuff. Let's go. If we need to come back for anything else, we'll just stop and get it somewhere else. So as we get to the register, I notice the the same guy. He is one aisle over from us in another checkout line. And he has his two items. And, you know, he's a couple people back. So as we're getting our stuff paid for, he's next in line. And... 
um, I asked the cashier if she'd ever seen that guy in here before. And, uh, she said she hasn't. She's never seen him in there before. You know, so I was just like, okay. You know, he's kind of been following us through the whole store, you know, and she didn't really say anything else about it. But we went ahead and we checked out. And as we were going out, I noticed the guy coming back out the door with nothing. So he left his stuff and he followed us back out the door. So at this point, I tell my wife, I say, hey, grab your phone and get it ready to call 911 in case we have to. Um, this guy is coming back out. You know, I don't know what his intentions are. He may just have to go somewhere. I don't know. You know, he left his stuff. He didn't get it. So we come up with a plan as we're walking across the parking lot. And I tell her that <clears throat> I'm going to go around to the driver's side and I'm going to get my oldest son in. And I'm going to watch her and watch for him while she's putting in my youngest son. And he was just a few months old at the time. So as she gets in there, I push the cart up between her and the back side of the vehicle with all the groceries in it. That way, she is blocked in from the door and a cart. So if this guy had snuck up onto her, he wouldn't be able to grab her or my youngest son without having to move that stuff ahead of time. So I go around, I park the cart, and I go around with my oldest son. And she's getting my youngest son in. And I tell my, my oldest, just go ahead and get in the vehicle. And I'm trying to scan the parking lot. And I lost sight of this guy as we were coming around the car. I don't know where the guy went. And that was a mistake for me. I should have kept an eye directly on this guy the entire time. But at the at the moment, you know, I'm thinking, just get my family in the vehicle, get them locked up as quick as possible and safe as possible. So I lost sight of the guy while I was coming around the vehicle and you know, my son, my oldest, he's, he's saying, Daddy, you know, buckle me up. You know, I'm just saying, just get in the car. I'll get you buckled in a minute. And I look back up. And by the time I look back up from telling my son that, and it was a split second. <clears throat> from the time I look back up, my, my wife has my youngest son buckled. And she's backing out of the vehicle, you know, so she's coming back out of the door. And I look up. And the guy is standing right at the cart, looking at her. So, you know, she just kind of panics and she just kind of like, you know, she, she's stunned. She don't know what to do at, at that time. And really, I didn't either because I lost sight of the guy and I was hoping he went the other way. But he didn't. He came all the way around. Like I said, we were three rolls over. So he come all the way back around in between vehicles to get to where we were. So at that moment, I initially, I grab my firearm. So I grab a hold of my firearm and I make myself known. You know, he sees me before I even say anything. We have an SUV with dark tinted windows in the back and I'm standing at the back. So as he, as he's coming up to the back of that cart, you know, before I even say anything, I got my hand on my gun and he sees me and he starts backing up. You know, he, he takes about two steps back. So I step out from the vehicle with my gun and I pull it out in a defensive display, which is kind of like at a low ready. So I pull it straight out of my holster and hold it straight down with my finger off the trigger. And I step out. And I asked the guy, I keep the gun kind of hid, but I do have it ready. And, <clears throat> you know, I step out and I'm like, can we help you? So the guy's like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, I thought this was my vehicle and uh, I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. You know, I thought this is my vehicle. He said, well, I must have parked over there. So I'm like, okay, well, you just need to step back and you need to go. So... The guy, he steps 
back again, but then he takes another step back forward. And at that moment, you know, I'm thinking, well, maybe he's going to try to grab my wife. So I step all the way out from behind the vehicle to where he can now see my firearm. And I tell him again, you need to leave. Get away from us. So the guy, he sees the firearm and he turns around. He makes a beeline down in front of one of the other cars and he goes all the way back across the parking lot. But as he's doing this, he grabs his phone. So he must have had it on the whole time because whenever he pulls it up to his ear, he's just like, come and get me. You know, I can hear him mumbling that across the parking lot. And another vehicle pulls up to get him which looks absolutely nothing like our vehicle. Uh, we drive a black Ford Edge SUV, and he got into a white PT Cruiser in the passenger side. So as they get in, um, they kind of speed off, and I look for a tag on the vehicle, but the vehicle pulled in about two rows over, I think. Might have been three. But as they're pulling out, there's no visible license plate on the vehicle at all. So, I don't know what the guy's intentions were. I don't know if he was trying to kidnap my son. If he was trying to steal my wife's purse, maybe. If he wanted to borrow money or pan for money, you know, panhandling for money or something. I don't know. I don't know what the guy's intentions were. But, I do know one thing. It was not good. His intentions were not good. Whatever it was, they were not good. You can tell a lot by a person just by watching their eyes and their hands and the way that they're moving, the way they're acting. And this guy was definitely up to no good. So we did call in a police report on this guy. And they never found him, never got any information, since there wasn't nothing really done, nobody was hurt, there was no police report filed. But I will tell you this, about four months later, it might not even been that long, maybe three months later. At this same retail store in Hickory, North Carolina, there were two incidents of reported child abduction. Okay, this was just months after my incident. Now, could it be related? I don't know. My guess is, yes, it was probably related. It was probably the same person. If it wasn't the same person, he was probably in with another group of people. And that's probably what they were doing. So, when you're out and about, guys, you have to keep your head on a swivel. You know, make sure you're paying attention to what people are saying around you what people are doing, who's in the who's around you, who's in your vicinity. And even whenever I go out to eat, I try to think, you know, as we go into a building, you know, I'm like, okay, I want to be facing the, the door, the main entrance. I want to see who's coming in, who's going out. And I always try to figure out where all the exits are as soon as we sit down. That way, if I have to get my kids out of a situation or my wife out of a situation like that, I can tell them where to go. They can get out. And with me being the sole protector of my family, this is all on me. So I have to make sure that I'm well prepared to be able to handle any situation that comes at that moment. Am I paranoid? I don't think I am. But am I prepared? Yes, I am prepared. And I think we all should be. We all should be thinking that way. So, let's break this down a little bit. Now, one thing that I should have done better was as soon as I noticed this guy was following us through the store and something was off with him, we should have immediately left then, okay? The best way to get yourself out of a defensive situation is to not be there, okay? So, 
If you go stupid places at stupid times with stupid people, you're going to find yourself in a stupid situation. Okay? Always remember that. Now, sometimes you can get away with breaking one of those three. But if you break all, if you break two or more, two or all three, then generally something bad's going to happen. All right? Now, was this a stupid place, stupid time with stupid people? No, not really. I don't think so. I feel pretty safe going there any other time. Always have. But every now and then, you just have some crazy person that just wants to cause harm to somebody. And that's the reason why I carry the things that I carry. So another thing that I could have done to deter this a little bit, instead of pulling my firearm, if I would have had my mace on me, that could have been a great option. Okay? Could have used this as a deterrent instead of my handgun. The guy didn't look to be armed. And he probably wasn't. But, you know, between a harsh word and a gun, this is about... The best way to go. That and verbal jujitsu. So if you know how to talk your way out of a situation and de-escalate, that's, that's the way to go. De-escalate the situation. You know, but if you have to, if you have to step it up, you know, use some mace. If the mace don't work, then you feel that your life is in immediate danger, use a firearm. But at that moment, I did feel like my my wife and my child was in danger. That's the reason I drew and displayed my firearm in a defensive manner. Now, was I brandishing a firearm? Not in the state of North Carolina. That was not brandishing. Brandishing a firearm is completely different than using it in a defensive display. You know, brandishing is pointing in an unruly manner. When defensive display, you pull it out and you're ready to go saying, Hey, you know, I'm not going to take your crap. I have a firearm and I will use it if I have to use it. Keyword being have to. Okay? You don't just shoot somebody for calling you a, a dummy or something. You know, you, you, don't, you don't just do that. You don't just shoot somebody for them saying bad stuff to you or... Telling you you can't read or something. You know, I mean, we're adults, people. Use your verbal jujitsu. If you can de-escalate the situation with words and get yourself out of there, do it. The best defense is getting away from the situation. Okay, but now if I would have had that, that would have been nice. Because whenever he stepped back towards my wife again, that next time, I would have blessed him with the hot sauce, I'm telling you. I would have. But <clears throat> let me move you guys down here a little bit. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I carry on an everyday basis. Now, everything on this table, I don't carry every day. Um, but I do kind of mix and match. So I want to talk about that. Let me get you guys moved down here. Don't judge me. Alright guys, so here I have a few different things that I carry on a daily basis. And this one, like I said, I have retired this as... Excuse me. Tacos. Like I said, I have retired this one as my EDC. So I just use this one in the woods whenever I go out hunting or something. You know, I carry this with me. And I mean... It's not a bad gun. I've actually never had any kind of malfunctions at all out of this. And this is the Springfield XD Mod 2 with the grip zone right there. So you know where you put your hand at. But <clears throat> the reason I decided I'm not going to carry this one is because of that right there. 
you know if it's not depressed all the way then the gun cannot fire and sometimes that will fail so I just threw that one out of my inventory for my EDC and this would have been what I would have been carrying at the time of the situation I had a wing on this also um, actually no it wasn't this it wasn't this holster it was one like this though it was one I made this one right here I bought from a company and it's junk this thing is junk has no retention but anyway I made my own and it was great had a wing on it and that's what I carried and I carried it appendix style and this is the firearm that I used that day in my my little story so this is my everyday carry now this is what I carry every single day the only time I don't carry this is when I have to go to work Unfortunately, the place I work at, they won't let me carry a firearm. So if I accidentally forget it and I leave it in my vehicle, I actually have to park off of the premises before I can even come in and punch in. And I have done that once. I forgot it was in there um, and I had to park off of the property to come in. That's been a while ago though. So Anyway, <clears throat> unfortunately, that's the way it is. But this is the six hour p365 this is the first generation they have a couple newer ones that they've they have some that they don't have the sights on it it's recessed in they have the 365 xl but this is just a six hour p365 and this one does not have the issues as the very first production ones did um i got this right after that so this one's this one's good to go and with this gun, I love this because it's so small and compact, but you still get a pretty decent amount of rounds. I mean, it comes with two 10-round magazines. This one has the pinky extension on it. The other one doesn't have that. And you can get a 12-round magazine for this as well. But it's just super compact. It is a bit snappy, but it's really not that bad to handle. Um, at least not for me anyway. Now, maybe for my wife, she might have some issues with this, but... I love this gun <clears throat> so the holster that I use this is a custom holster that I built and I love this holster I made this one specifically for my needs and it works great for me um, along with that every day I also carry a backup magazine and this is my flush mount that I have here this is the 10 round also and I carry the 6 hour p365 ammo in these I have some other stuff over here, but first, let's just say this is what I carry every day. So I carry my firearm, backup mag, I carry a flashlight, carry some sort of a pocket knife, and some mace, or just some kind of OC spray. Now this one here, this is the Sabre brand, and you can pick this up just about anywhere. This one I picked up at Walmart. Um, I think it was like 10 or 12 dollars don't really remember i think it was 10 uh, no it was 12 this stuff is okay it's not the best in the world but it's not the worst by far the lock on it is very loose so if you're carrying this don't just stick it in your pocket put it in some kind of a pouch or something that way this can't get knocked around and you're accidentally spraying inside your pocket that wouldn't be good if you do get this brand i would recommend getting the gel there is one it's a gel type and it comes out a lot thicker it's not the aerosol so it's not going to spray all over the place and you're not going to get as much of it back in your face with the wind but i do carry some step over to the pocket knife this pocket knife here this is the kershaw hot wire it's just a cheap knife again from walmart this one here i actually got on clearance a few years back thinking i gave like three bucks for this thing i don't know why it was clearanced out they clearanced all of them out at that time but you can still get these so i'm not sure this has been a really good knife i've been carrying this one for a couple years and it stays razor sharp i haven't had any problems out of my clip or out of my my uh, axle here 
or the spring assist. The spring assist still works great on this thing. You know, love this little knife. And it's compact, you know, it's big enough to, to do what I need it to do. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of room in my, in my pocket. Now, I've said it before, I'm a minimalist. So I like things that is cheap and going to do the job, but I don't like junk. I've said that too. And again, with that, I have this little flashlight here. This is the HyperTough 100L. It's 100 lumens. It runs off two AA batteries. Again, I got this one at Walmart for 10 bucks. I have probably six or seven of these all together. Been carrying this one for a few years, and I haven't had any problems out of this. It stays on when I need it on. The button seems to work great. Um, it's not very big. You know, it's about the same size as my index finger in width. And you get probably... Uh, six to eight hours of battery life out of one of these but it just fits really well in my pocket and at 30 yards i can light up anything i want and be able to see what i need to see with this also i have a surefire flashlight that i carry and i don't carry this one all the time this one mostly stays on my nightstand but every now and then i will carry this light and i did make me a kydex holster for this to just clip on my belt and this light works great also. Um, you get a lot of life out of the batteries on these. They're pretty bright. I think this one is 300 lumens. It's just been a good light all around. It's just been a good light. So next up, I have this little K-bar knife here. And I'll just run my belt through here. And I usually carry this appendix on my left side. And I got this one from North Carolina state police officer out of Caldwell County. He's a pretty good buddy of mine. He actually done my concealed carry classes for me and um, that's how I met him. And, you know, we keep in touch pretty regular. But this has been a great little knife also. Razor sharp, very durable. K-Bar makes some good stuff. Another thing that I keep, I keep these in my vehicle. I have one of my wife's and one in mine. I also have one of these in my EDC bag. And you can buy these. It comes in a two-pack. Uh, I got this off of Amazon. I'm thinking for right around about $14. I'm not 100% sure on that. But this is the Rescue Me. It's spelled R-E-S-Q-M-E, -E, made in USA. And what this is, you just pull that off. It's got a little razor blade in there to cut a belt with you know like a seat belt or something to get out of a vehicle also you can take this and it's spring loaded so you push up against a window on that and it'll pop and there's a little metal piece that'll pop out of there and it'll shatter the window within seconds so that's good to have in my vehicle in case we get into an accident and we're trapped in the vehicle and can't get out i can use that to get out or if i see some kid sitting in the vehicle on a hot day and it's 120 degrees out the windows rode up nobody around i can use that to bust that window and possibly save that child's life so that's a good thing to to look into i will try to put a link in the description for this for you guys that way if you want to check them out you can get on there and check them out also back to the oc spray I don't really recommend the Sabre brand, but what I do recommend is the Palm OC spray. It's P-O-M. That stuff is great. It's it's pretty, pretty potent stuff, and you pick it up pretty cheap. I'll also put a link in the description for that for you guys as well. It's some pretty good stuff. I don't have one of those on me right now, but I do have this one, so I'm showing you that. Now, another thing that I like to keep, I have a first aid kit. Here's just a a little ouchy boo-boo kit that I have. This one, if I'm not mistaken, I also got from Walmart. Now, if we open this up, it's got, you know, it's got some gauze in it. A couple pieces of gauze. as an emergency blanket if you need that. It's got some bigger pieces of gauze in here. Um, has an ABD pad right there. Also comes with this little ice pack you know you can break that inside of this zipper i have some copper tone water babies rub on such sunscreen for my kids and then it has some sun 
sun cream in here. There's some burn cream, some mosquito uh, insect repellent. Has some poison ivy and poison oak and sumac cream. Got plenty of band-aids, several different varieties, some aspirin, Tylenol, stuff like that. And then getting over to the other side, there's some gloves, a couple more bandages, some Q-tips. There's a little plastic pair of tweezers here, you know, might come in handy for something. A couple pieces of wood there for some finger splints or whatnot, whatever you need it for. Some safety pins. Got some tape in there. And there's tons of these quick clean antiseptic hand wipes. And then some alcohol prep pads, a bunch of those. So this comes in handy now in my vehicle i do have a larger one with different things and i also have one in my edc bag with different things one thing this didn't have in it that i just realized is some quick clot now that stuff's pretty good if you don't know what that is it's exactly what it says it is it's quick clot so if you got a cut and you're having problems getting it to stop bleeding you can open up a package of that, sprinkle it on there, and it starts clotting the blood up real quick. And you don't have to worry about bleeding to death too soon. So, anyway guys, I think that does it for this video. I just want to say again, thank you guys so much for all the support and respect you've been showing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Keep it coming, guys. If you have any questions on anything um, that I have here as my EDC stuff, or any questions or comments about my little story that I had told you guys, um, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I always appreciate some, some feedback on stuff like that. So thank you guys again for watching. And be sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe, guys. I can't get anywhere without the, the comments. And, you know, it gives me ideas for everything. And... I really appreciate whenever you guys subscribe that way you're getting my newest content like this video you're watching here. I do have a few more videos coming out that I've already started on and hopefully I can have those out sometime within the week or within the week after. But thank you guys for watching and have a good night.